Hi everyone and welcome to this first Grasshopper project. I'm your tutor Niels and today we're going to look at the essentials of Grasshopper. We're going to construct points and lines, rotate geometry and have a look at what sliders are. So for the covered components we're going to look at construct point, rotate axis, circle CNR, divide curve, line STL, line and number sliders. And we're going to have a thorough look on how these components actually work. So let's get to it. So we want to create a higher and a lower point of the circular tower. So actually I need two points. We can find them on a factor, point and construct point. So as you can see, we already have a red cross there indicating the construction of the point. And we select it, turns green. And this is because the x, y, and z coordinates already have zero implemented. So we need another point, and we can do it in two ways. We can simply grab another point there and input it. Or alternatively, we can just select it, Ctrl Z and Ctrl V, so copy pasting it. It's whatever you prefer. So let's add a number slide to change the height of the second point. And a number slider we can find on the param, input, number slider. So let's drag it in. Okay, let me just make some room. And we can just simply connect it with the Z coordinate of the second point. And as you can see, it moved up there. And if I change this slider value, you can see that it changes position. So it's actually a parametric point. So let's input two circles. We can do this by going to Curve, Primitive, and Circle C and R. Let me just put it in. And C and R stands for Center, Normal, and Radius. So for the center point, we just supply the point, the lower point that we created there. Well, and as you can see, we it immediately makes a circle. And that's because the radius is already inputted as 1. Uh, let's create a number slider to change this value. So, under param input. And let's connect it to radius. Ah, so, as you can see, it changes to 0.25. And if I change the number slider, you can see the circle is changing. So let's create another circle by copy and paste. Let's apply the higher points by center and just input a new number slider to change the radius. Cool. So as you can see as well, this higher circle also changes. So next up we want to create the lines between the two curves, two circles. So we can do this by dividing the circles in points. And we can do this with the component under curve division and divide curve. So let's make some room, put it there. So it has two most important inputs, curve and count. So let's input the lower circle into curve. Well, as you can see, it creates 10 points because the count is set to 10 as default. But leave it, let's leave it at 10, it's fine. So create another one, divide curve, and put it there. 
and add circle to the curve input. So as you can see, we now have both of the circles divided into 10 points. Now we want to create a line between these points. And the line we can find on the curve, primitive and line. Let's put it there. And it has a start point and end point as inputs. So let's put the points there at start and the end points at these points. Well, as you can see, we now created lines between the two circles. And if we change these parameters, for example, the height, we can see that it just changes the shape with the input of the slider. So it's actually fully parametric. So that's the advantage of Grasshopper. So next up, we want to make the shape a little bit more interesting. And we can do that by rotating the upper circle. And we can, the component is called rotate axis and can be found on the transform, Euclidean, and at the bottom, rotate axis. So this one has an input geometry, which we're going to input the above circle. It has an angle on how much to rotate and also an axis. And this axis is around which to rotate from. So we want to actually rotate it under of a, around the Z axis. So we have to create a line which is pointing in towards the Z direction. We can find this line on the curve, primitive, and line STL. So this one has a starting position and also a direction. And for us, the starting position, we're going to grab the above point, so there, input it and start. And as a direction, the default is already in the Z direction. So for us, that's perfect. So let's input this line into axis. Okay. And let's create, tag the above circle and put it into geometry. And now we want to also manipulate the angle of this rotation. And we can do that by inputting a number slider. So again, a param input and also a number slider. So let's connect it to the angle. So right now we still have the input of the non-rotated curve. So we want to actually have this rotated curve divided. So let's input curve with the rotate axis geometry. And as you can see, it's already changes the shape. So right now it's already rotated. And if I'm manipulating the angle, we can see actually that it's changing and that every line is still connected. So that's perfect. So if you play a little bit more, we can see that for example, the height, it's still shaped still stays the same and also for the bottom and lower circle thank you for following this tutorial with me and i hope to see you in the next one